Hi everyone, my name is Shauna Madelon. I am an attending radiologist in the Division of Abdominal Imaging and Intervention at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And this talk will be an introduction to performing ultrasound guided procedures. Uh, at the end of this talk, you'll know the steps necessary to prepare for an ultrasound guided procedure. You'll be able to optimize your procedural ultrasound images, and you'll be able to use different maneuvers to allow for continuous real-time visualization of your needle during ultrasound guided procedures. The outline for this talk is we'll start by discussing considerations when prepping for ultrasound guided procedures. Then we'll discuss how to optimize your ultrasound image. And then we'll discuss ultrasound and hand maneuvers to obtain continuous real-time visualization of your needle. We'll start with prep considerations. First, you'll need to collect your necessary equipment. Then you'll want to prepare the patient and then prepare yourself and prep your tray. And so we'll go through each of these steps. So the first step is to collect the necessary equipment. So if you're performing a biopsy, you'll need a coaxial biopsy kit, which includes an introducer needle and a biopsy needle. And this is used for a core biopsy. If you're performing a fine needle aspiration or an FNA, you'll also need Chiba needles um, to perform this. So the core biopsy kit comes with an introducer needle shown here and a side cutting core biopsy needle shown here. The introducer needle has a sharp tip and an inner stylet that is removable, which creates a hollow introducer needle with a blunt tip when the sharp tip is removed. Once your introducer needle is approximated to the target that you want to sample, you're going to place the core biopsy needle coaxially through the introducer needle and it's going to come out the other end. The tip of the core biopsy needle looks like this when it's ready to take the sample. This is the tray where the sample is obtained. And as you can see, it's on the side of the needle, which is why this is called a side cutting core biopsy needle. This tray can be adjusted to take either one or two centimeter samples. And so when you obtain your samples, they look like skinny little inchworms that are either one or two centimeters long. If you're gonna take uh, FNA, you're gonna still most likely use an introducer needle and use a coaxial technique. So your introducer needle will again approximate to your target. And then you're gonna place the Chiba needle size of your choosing, 18 gauge all the way down to 25 gauge to obtain your fine needle aspirations. And the reason people often use an introducer needle is because this really holds your spot so that you don't have to go from skin to your target each time you obtain a sample. Um, the majority of people use either a 22 gauge or a 25 gauge Chiba needle for fine needle aspirations. And at our institution, the majority of the time we have the cytopathologist come down to inspect our sample under the microscope to ensure adequacy before we complete the procedure. If you're going to be performing a drainage, you're going to also need to collect certain equipment. There are two main techniques to performing a drain. You can either do trocar technique or you can do Seldinger technique. So the trocar technique is where the drain has a sharp tip on the end of it and it is placed directly into the collection uh, through a skin incision under imaging guidance. The Seldinger technique is a technique where we sort of use a needle to gain access, a wire to hold our place, then we dilate the tract, and then over that wire we place our drain. So this has multiple steps, whereas this is more of like a one-step sort of technique. So the drains um, are a three-piece system. So it's from um, outside in, we have the drain itself, which is shown here. Um, on this example, the drain is turquoise. Then we have a blunt metal stylet, which is within the drain. And then we have a sharp inner stylet, which is within the blunt metal stylet. So it's a three piece system. When the drain is fully sort of set up like this, you can see it's straight obviously, but when the metal um, inner stylet and blunt stylet are removed, the drain has this coil on the end of it and a string that you pull to lock the coil. Um, in these systems, you want to make sure that your sharp inner stylet is locked if you are using it. And so you can see this metal piece here sort of clips on over the blunt metal stylet to hold it in place. Or if you're gonna be using Seldinger technique, you wanna remove the sharp inner stylet altogether. Um, and so that can come off and be placed into your sharps container. If you're gonna be using Seldinger technique, you're gonna need some sort of access catheter, either a Chiba needle or a Centesis catheter. You're gonna need a wire to hold your place, and you're gonna need dilators, um, either 
up to or just below the French of your drainage catheter. So if you're using a 12 French drainage catheter, some people will dilate up to 10 French and some people will dilate up to 12 French um, so that the catheter goes in more easily. Okay, so once you've collected your equipment, you're gonna wanna prepare the patient. So you're gonna do this by optimizing the patient positioning. You either want them head first or feet first in the ultrasound room, whichever makes sense based on the side of the body that you're working on. You wanna make sure that their arms are comfortable for them and also for you because you don't want their arms to get tired or numb in the middle of the procedure and you also don't want them in the way of the procedure. And you wanna make sure that the gown that the patient is wearing is out of the way for your procedure. Um, you also want to optimize the patient's positioning relative to you. So you want to make sure the height of the bed or the table is uh, appropriate for you, that you're not totally hunched over or working on your tippy toes. And you also want to position the ultrasound screen so that you're not kinking your neck to be able to see your images while performing the procedure. Um, while you prepare the patient, you're going to want to do your ultrasound to you know, make sure that the positioning and ultrasound is optimized. So you're going to want to obtain labeled planning images. Um, you're going to want to mark your entry spot. You're going to want to remove the gel that you just used for that ultrasound from the patient using a towel. You're going to want to prepare your ultrasound probe by putting a big wad of gel on the probe that will go under your ultrasound probe cover. And you're going to want to remove the cover from the sterile tray. Then you'll want to prepare yourself. Make sure you have your bouffant cap on, your mask, and your eye shield. And you're going to get your gown and gloves ready by unwrapping them and getting them ready to be placed sterilely. And you're going to want to clean your hands. Once you've done this, you're going to look at your prep tray and get everything set up. So the average prep tray has all of these pieces of equipment. You're going to have your towels for draping, you have an extra drape with a hole in the middle of it, the ultrasound cover for the machine, as well as the cover for the ultrasound probe and some sterile gel. Um, you're gonna have, if you're doing a paracentesis or a thoracentesis, drainage tubing um, available. You're gonna have your sharps container, which also contains your scalpel and your three needles, um, which include an 18 gauge needle for drawing up lidocaine, a 22 gauge needle for deeper numbing, and a 25 gauge needle for skin numbing, which you can also use for deeper numbing if you choose. Um, then you're gonna have this area here, which has an empty sterile cup that you can use for flow cytometry if saline is placed into it, and a bowl for um, for saline, for cleaning or other things. You're gonna have your two chloroprep wipes. Um, and if you're doing a drain, you're gonna have um, a drainage catheter um, cover and you're gonna have additional gauze. And then there are labels and ruler back here as well. So some people do this a little bit differently, but I think it makes sense to start by prepping the patient with the chloroprep first. You're gonna to wanna to do a wide prep and you need to have some time to let it air dry. So that's why I think it makes sense to do first. While you're waiting for your prep to dry, you can obtain the lidocaine in a 10 cc syringe. You wanna make sure that it's labeled. You're gonna use your 16 gauge needle, which is the pink hub needle. And you're gonna either do a combination of lidocaine and bicarb if we have it, or just 10 cc's of lidocaine. You're then gonna drape the patient using towels with um, making a wide prep and wide space. And you can also use that extra drape, which I showed you here, um, as an extra cover so that you have more room to work. When I do this, I don't remove this piece of paper so that way you don't have a hole and you just have a complete drape. And then you're gonna cover your ultrasound using the probe cover and then you're gonna cover the machine so that you can touch the buttons as needed during the procedure. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to ultrasound image optimization. So this is the standard ultrasound machine that we have in our department and we're gonna go through some of the features on this machine. The two most common ultrasound parameters that we use are the abdomen parameter and also the small parts for superficial lymph nodes and other things. When we do the abdomen, we most likely are gonna be using a curved transducer. Um, when we're doing a superficial procedure, we're gonna use the small parts of the linear transducer and some people sometimes use a hockey puck as well for superficial procedures. So these are some of the important buttons that we'll need to use. This is the button to label our images. If we need to perform a measurement, we can push this button. If we wanna assess for blood flow, um, we can hit the Doppler button here. If we need to change the depth of our image, you push this knob up and down. If we wanna perform a cine clip of our ultrasound image, we hit P3 and then take the image that we want. Or if we wanna just save a single image, we can hit freeze and then save a still image. 
on the upright part of the machine, we can adjust the number of focus points and also the position of the focal points. And that's done here by twisting the knob to increase or decrease the number of focal points and pushing the knob up and down to change the position of the focal points. So here's an example of an image that really was not optimal for a procedure. So here's a liver lesion. You can see that there's a lot of image below the lesion when really we're just interested in the lesion itself and maybe a little bit of space below. And so what we can do here is decrease our depth. So we can see here our depth is about 15 centimeters. We've decreased it to about 10 centimeters and we've adjusted our focal point so that the focal point is just below the area of interest. And so these are two ways that you can optimize your image. Imaging documentation is incredibly important in CSIR. So before the biopsy, you're going to want to make sure that you label your image with what you're um, looking at or what you're going to be sampling. You also want to measure from the skin entrance site to the lesion. And keep in mind that this is underestimating the length of the trajectory. And so I usually add a couple of centimeters in my head before I select the length of my um, biopsy needle. And then you'll also want to perform a color Doppler to assess for vessels, and you're going to want to save all of these images. During the procedure, you're going to want to be sure that you've saved images that document your needle positioning during the biopsy. Usually we do this in long axis, but you can also perform short axis images to prove that you're within the lesion itself. And then, and then after the biopsy, you're going to want to look for complications such as bleeding or pneumothorax. Um, and you can also increase your depth after you've performed the biopsy to look around the area to do this. And then finally, we're going to discuss ultrasound and hand maneuvers so that you can obtain continuous real-time visualization of your needle. So it all starts with ergonomics. You want to be sure to anchor your probe hand against the patient. And this is for two reasons. The first reason is that your hand is gonna get really tired if you're not resting it on the patient. And two, you're gonna have a much more sturdy hold on your ultrasound probe and your ultrasound probe is less likely to slip during the procedure when it's most important that you obtain your visualization of your needle. You want to be sure not to cross your hands. So you wanna practice ambidexterity when possible. And you're going to want to, as I said earlier, ult optimize the ultrasound machine and screen position so that you're comfortable throughout the procedure and adjust the height of the bed for the same reason. So ultrasound needle position, this is referred to as long axis. This is what we mostly use in CSIR, where the needle is parallel to the long axis of your ultrasound probe, and you can see the entire needle visualized throughout the procedure. And here's your tip, and here's the length of the needle. This is our most commonly used technique. Short axis is occasionally used, and this is when the needle is perpendicular to the long axis of the transducer. Some people will use this as a walk down technique, finding the tip this way. We rarely use it in CSIR, and when we do use it, it can be helpful to confirm the position of your needle within a lesion. So it shows that the tip of your needle is within the lesion itself. Okay, so how do we optimize our needle visualization? Because this is probably the most challenging thing about doing an ultrasound guided procedure. So you have two tricks. You can either move the needle or you can move the transducer. Generally speaking, you don't really want to move the needle if you can't see it fully because you don't know what you're moving the needle into. So you only want to move one thing at a time, either the needle or the transducer, and preferably you'll be moving the transducer, not the needle. If you are going to move the needle, two tricks that you can do are to jiggle or rotate the needle or to move the inner stylet. These are things that can help you visualize your needle if you're having trouble seeing it under ultrasound. In this case, you're not moving the needle very much, and so this is, these are relatively safe maneuvers, um, and you're looking for a little echogenic flicker of the needle tip. Transducer manipulation, we have sort of three main ways that we can move the transducer to visualize our needle and to optimize our image. We're gonna start with translation. So translation is also called sliding. So we can slide along the long axis or we can slide along the short axis. And this helps us find our needle if we're not sure exactly where it is. Another way that we can find our needle is by tilting the ultrasound probe either along its short or long axis. When tilting it along its long axis, people often refer this to angling the ultrasound probe. You're gonna do this in a very slow, subtle fashion until you see your needle. If we tilt along the short axis, this is sometimes called rocking the probe. So we're gonna rock the probe along the short axis here, 
so that we can now see our needle. This is beneficial because you want your needle to be approximately 90 degrees from your beam because this optimizes the visualization. So you can see in this example here, when the needle is at an angle relative to your ultrasound beam, the needle is a little bit harder to see than when the needle is 90 degrees to your beam, you can see it very clearly. So by rocking the probe on the patient's skin, you have much better visualization of your needle. And then finally, say you see part of your needle, but you don't see your tip. What you can do then is rotate the end of your probe so that you can see your needle, as shown here. Okay, and finally a word about gas and ultrasound. So as we know, gas is really the enemy of ultrasound images. It can really obscure what you're looking for because it causes dirty shadowing and you can't see anything beyond it. So we wanna be very careful about introducing gas into the area that we're interested in while performing a procedure. So the first thing we wanna think about is the lidocaine syringe. You wanna be sure to get out every single last tiny bubble of gas in your lidocaine syringe. And importantly, when changing the needles on the lidocaine syringe, you want to remove any gas in the column of the needle. So every time you switch your needle, you're gonna to wanna to inject a small amount of lidocaine out, that, out the needle to be sure that there's no gas inside your system. And then finally, with coaxial biopsy system, each time you place your biopsy needle into the introducer, you're introducing a small column of gas into the area of your target. And so very small lesions can become very quickly obscured by the gas. Um, and you can see here, the epigenic foci of gas is obscuring our focal liver lesion. Okay, and last but not least, the top 10 mistakes that people make when performing ultrasound guided procedures. The first is poor positioning of either yourself, the patient, or the ultrasound machine. As I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure that both you and the patient are comfortable before starting your procedure so you don't have to change things up during the procedure, whether it's the patient's position or your positioning because you're getting a kink in your neck from having to turn your neck all the way around to see your ultrasound machine. Um, the next one is inefficient preparation. So this is, you know, you've got, gone into the room, you've prepared the patient, but you forgot some of your equipment or you're prepping your tray and prepping the patient and you do chloroprep last. That doesn't make any sense. So sort of follow the guidelines that I've given you and you'll have a very efficient time effective preparation. An insufficient sterile field is the next one. So there's really no reason to make a small sterile field. Sometimes with patient sedation, the positioning of the target will actually change with their breathing. For example, if you're doing a liver mass biopsy, the lesion will actually come up a little bit more cranial as their breathing becomes more shallow with sedation. So you wanna make sure that your sterile field accounts for this possible change in position. Poorly adjusted ultrasound image parameters. So again, you wanna optimize your image to make things as easy as possible for you during the procedure. Um, you wanna be sure that you document your images throughout the procedure. So this includes the pre-procedure image, the intra-procedural images, so making sure that you've documented your needle tip in the lesion, um, and post-procedure images documenting either the presence or lack of complication. And remember to decrease your depth so that you can see deeper when you're looking for complications. Um, the next one is unstable probe handling. Remember to hold the ultrasound probe against the patient so that the ultrasound probe is not sliding during the procedure. Um, the next one is overzealous probe adjustments. When you're looking for your needle and making adjustments, you want to be very subtle with your movement. Not to, You don't want to move the ultrasound probe too drastically or you'll miss your needle altogether. Um, the next mistake is moving the needle without visualization. So aside from very subtle movements like needle jiggling or rotating the needle in place, um, you really don't want to move the needle unless you can visualize the tip because what will happen is you end up much deeper than you intend and you can hit structures that you don't mean to hit. Um, in this note, uh, or in this. In this vein, you also want to make sure that you have complete tip visualization throughout the procedure. And then finally, you wanna be very careful about injecting gas into your image, um, which can really obscure your image and make the procedure much more complicated. So I hope you learned something today and that this will make your ultrasound guided procedures a little easier. Um, thank you for your attention.